This is what we're making, a little interlocking ring. Um, and to the pattern of your choice. We're going to make a stacked ring, I guess is what it would be called. So the metal is seven millimeters wide and what you need to do is get get your ring sizer, get the inside diameter in millimeters, add the thickness of your metal. So we're going to be using from 0.8 to 1 millimeter thick metal. Draw the length on a piece of paper. This this note paper is actually seven millimeters in between the lines so it makes it quite easy to lay out and I know that my ring shank ends up being 60 millimeters long so I can just draw that full size in between these lines and what what you will do is draw your pattern and ideally the pattern will start in the middle. I'll zoom in, hopefully. So you can see if I if I start in the middle and I end roughly in the middle, the patterns will match. So I I will just draw spiral, spiral, a wavy line that ends up here in the middle. Now this is too close to the side. Leave, leave a couple of millimeters on the side, otherwise you'll get too thin and the ring will it'll either wear through really quickly or it'll just kink. Uh, you, could, you can do something like a wave. You want uh, pretty much anything that appeals to you. That when we're finished, we'll have two rings that will fit perfectly together. So the idea, you have the idea, and uh, just give it a go. So cut your metal to size, file the ends perfectly flat. It's easier to do it now when it's all in one piece. Number two cut flat hand file. Now when you have the ends file flat, remeasure your length because this is critical. If it's half a millimeter long, it's going to be half a size too big. If it's half a millimeter short, it's going to be half a size too small. So be precise with your length. You probably notice my background noise. It's uh, raining. And I, I really enjoy listening to the rain on a tin roof. Makes it, makes it more pleasant. Now, when you lay out your lines on this, what you want is something that's asymmetrical so it will be radically different so it'll be obvious that the links the rings are meant to be together so i'm just putting a bit of a hump on one end and then what i'm going to do is go up and put a bit of a hump on the other end and end roughly in the middle so that's the idea. Saw. Like I say, if, if you start in the center and you end in the center, it'll be easy to, to put these together. Thank <laughs> you.
so saw it completely and then we'll anneal when you get to the end with your sawing just make sure that the saw goes into the wood not into your finger I put the metal on a charcoal block and I'm just going to heat it until it's a dull red do them one at a time don't don't try to do them both at the same time and don't be fooled by the first color that the metal turns because that's not red so heat it until it's actually a dull red that you can see when you shield it with your hand Now quench it and quench them one at a time and lay them back on the block or on your bench plate in order. So you can see I have them matching. But after you anneal, pickle because the metal needs to be cleaned before we start to solder it. So then make sure that they're laying in a proper order. And what we're going to do is pick them up one at a time use our flat half round pliers. I'm starting at the right end. The half round goes on the inside and I'm going to curl this into a bit of a rough oval so that it fits. And when you pick up the second piece do the same thing. Start at the right hand side curl it into a bit of a rough oval it's just to make sure that the rings fit because it would be quite easy to turn it the wrong way and if you turn it the wrong way nothing will line up so get your in so that they fit as closely as possible and we'll solder it with hard solder so hold the rings joint up on the third hand and I flex the join and I'm going to use one two millimeter long piece of hard solder that I picked up with my solder pick. Heat the join. When the flex goes clear, place your solder. Do the next one. Quench, pickle, and round it up on the ring mandrel. When you take your rings out of the pickle and you've rounded them up, put them together, make sure that they still fit. Now, at this point, sand everything back, hallmark the rings, sand off the little bump, and uh, polish them up. So sand inside, outside, edges, uh, the solder join, sand everything, make it perfect. Sand your rings to a 400 grade finish on the outside and on the outside of the rings where they're flat. Then use your split mandrel on your handpiece also with 400 grade paper to do the inside because you want your uh, join to be invisible and what I'm doing is I'm also using the split mandrel to go around the edge that I saw so be fairly gentle with this, keep it moving back and forth because you don't want to wear any little grooves in there that are going to be visible because it will be impossible to get them out. Um, 
and then onto your wooden ring stick and polish it on a uh, cotton buff with Tripoli and then we'll wash it and polish it on rouge. Now what I'm going to do is put the rings together and put them on the wooden ring stick together because I don't I don't want to round off any of the inside edges I want to keep them flat and the way to do that is to keep the rings together. So there we are they're polished. Now when you're working with sterling and you've polished your ring take a piece of white paper lay the ring on it and look and if you have fire scale it'll show up as a uh, shadow. Now when you're sanding with your sanding stick if you've done a good job and this, this just applies to flat surfaces if it's textured it's different but if, if you sand it decently in the beginning when you polish it on the Tripoli you won't have any fire scale so get it together so they are basically an interlocking ring and when you put it on it'll just look like a black line down the middle but they are separate and I guess if you were perverse you could wear it that way so there you go another little project